Okay, page 32 and 33. North Sea Raiders. While opposing armies fought it out in the mud, British and German battleships prowled the waters of the North Sea. Most people expected a quick showdown between the two fleets in the ground tradition of previous wars. But the war at sea began with another tried and tested tactic, naval blockade. The British Navy set up a blockade around Europe the moment war was de declared, searching merchant ships and con confiscating or taking cargoes bound for Germany. German chemists invented substitutes for goods that would have been imported, explosives, fertilizers, even coffee. But food rationing still had to be introduced and people struggled to find enough to eat. German admirals were desperate to smash the blockade, but most of their fleet was trapped inside the North Sea by British warships. Only their submarines, known as U-boats, could slip past the patrols. So in February 19, they ordered the U-boats to sink any ships sighted in British coastal waters. And here's a big picture here. German sailors clinging to the side of the warship Blucher as it capsizes at Dog, Dog, Dogger Bank. Many of the men who ended up in the cold waters of the North Sea in January would have died from exposure. Oh, man. In the years leading up to the war, Britain and Germany had spared no expense in proving and expanding their fleets of boats. Their big gun dreadnoughts were paraded at sea, symbols of naval might, supported by an armada of other warships. Battle cruisers were lighter and faster than dreadnoughts, but still packed a powerful punch. Smaller vessels, such as destroyers, patrolled, patrolled coastal seas. Here's a Royal Navy singleman signal man on board a British warship. The position of his flag spell out different letters of the alphabet. Ships were fitted with wireless radio sets that could send long distance sound signals. As they were easy to inter intercept, messages were usually sent in code, but it could take up to 10 minutes to decipher and rush a message to a captain. So in battle conditions, the fleet still relied on traditional flag signals to communicate between ships. This system was fine in slow, close quarter battles back in the days when warships were powered by sail, but modern navies could be strung out for miles across the ocean, almost hidden by smoke and spray. Communication foul-ups sometimes ended in disaster. Battle of the Bight. The British fleet struck first, sending a small group of cruisers and destroyers to attack German patrols in the Heligoland Bight. I'm on August 28, 1914. They sank two torpedo boats and a destroyer and then lured a pack of pursuing enemy cruisers into the North Sea. British warships steamed up to sink three of these cruisers and over 700 German sailors lost their line, lives. So here's the North Sea, okay? And if we go back to our map over here, this is where the North Sea is, okay? And you guys are doing geography to work on that. Showing the major battle sites in the early stages of the war. British and German naval bases and the British towns that were subjected to naval bombardment. Okay, so here's some of the battles. You know, the battles are marked here. So this is a naval battle. This is a naval base. And this is an attacked town shown in these pictures here. On November 3, the German Navy began to turn its guns on British coastal towns and Great Yarmouth, Yarmouth was shelled. On December 16, their warship attacked... Scarborough, Scarborough, Hartlepool, and Whidbey. Whidbey's Clifftop Abbey was left in ruins and 139 people were killed before the raiders slipped safely back to base. The raids outraged the country and embarrassed the Royal Navy, who saw itself as the nation's protector. In January 1915, the British Navy struck again. They had recovered three code books from wrecked and captured German ships and were able to use this incredible good luck to, lead in, to read intercepted radio signals. On the night of January 23, they decoded an enemy message describing a raid planned for the morning. When German warships crossed an area called Dodger, Dogger Bank in the middle of the North Sea, the British were waiting for them in force. The Germans tried to run, but there was no escape from the long-range guns of the British ships. Four German warships were caught at Dogger Bank. One, the Blucher, was sunk and another badly damaged. On the British side, HMS Lion had to be towed back to port, but only 15 sailors had been killed. The German fleet had lost over a thousand men. It was a clear win for the British, but the war at sea was only just beginning. Okay, we're gonna come in over here. We're gonna go to page 32 and 33. 
and um, we're going to look at some of the U-boats. Restores fuel economy and maximizes horsepower in one bottle. Check out the full episode and pick up Gum Out Regain today. Navy's already had self-propelled torpedoes. But launched from a sub, they promised an unstoppable ship-killing weapon. Even the biggest battleships were heavily armored only above the surface and would be vulnerable to torpedoes fired by an unseen attacker striking below the waterline. Germany wasn't the only nation to see the submarine's potential. As war clouds gather over Europe, Britain, France, and Russia all scrambled to build subs of their own. But Germany's U-boats would have the greatest impact in World War I. 210 feet long, it has a crew of 35, a maximum safe diving depth of 160 feet, and a remarkable range of 7,600 miles on the surface. It's armed with a powerful 105 millimeter deck gun to destroy ships from the surface and six torpedoes. But the submarine remains unproven in battle. A debate rages. Old Guard naval commanders are skeptical about subs. Advocates promise a devastating new weapon. Okay, and we're gonna go back. We're gonna look at the virtual U-boat boat. Okay, um, I think what I'm actually gonna do for this one, yeah, I'm gonna put this link up for you guys um, so that you can view this if you would like to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there right now for you guys. So you can view the vir virtual for those of you who are interested can do that. And then, oh, this is kind of cool. This is a thing where you can make signal flags if you want to. So this is another link that I'm gonna put up for you guys that if you want to do this, you can, but this would not be required. This would just be something extra that you could do for fun if you wanted to. And then I wanted to go back. I was looking for um, the, the major timeline thing and I'm not seeing, I don't remember where that went um, to find the timeline for the World Wars, but that's okay. And then let me see if there was anything else here um, okay, there's a few other neat links here that I'm going to add to this for you, but that's going to be it um, for this particular video.